Present, please be seated. The floor is given to the co-prosecutor to resume his line of questioning. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. Witness, I would like also to talk about Rad Varai Chondek. Is that pagoda still in uh, your village, Tro, in Baleng commune? Yeah. Well. Answer. Varai Chondek is in uh, Tro village, uh, Balang district, Balang Sankat rather. Barai district. Est-ce qu'elle était proche de l'endroit où vous travaillez? Was it close to the place where you were working at the 1st January dam work site? Uh, answer. The 1st January dam work site was a bit away from uh, this pagoda. It was uh, perhaps a uh, one and a half kilometers away from that pagoda. I'll read out what you stated on page two of your uh, statement D166-18. Page two of both languages. You are asked, did you know that whether there were evacuations? Uh, and you said, I wasn't evacuated. Yet some inhabitants of Kampuncham were evacuated to Barai Chandek Pagoda and were subsequently executed. I did not see the killings as we were not allowed to get in the pagoda, but we noticed a very unpleasant smell outside of the pagoda, end of quote. I'll try to clarify a number of things with you because it is not quite clear when you say that the inhabitants of Kampong Cham were evacuated to the pagoda, what did you mean? Were they taken there directly? Or they first worked in your village and commune, or on the 1st January dam work site before they arrived at Barai Chandek Pagoda? Mm. Answer. These people had been evacuated from Kampung Cham province. <coughs> they were transported by a vehicle and uh, ox carts into Barai Chondai Pagoda. I saw they came into the pagoda and they came at night time, and after they arrived at the pagoda, the scene was silent. Uh, people from uh, that province did not uh, go to work at uh, the, the dam work site. Uh, they were brought into the pagoda. Can you tell us whether that pagoda was used as a security center and for how long it was operational between 1975 and 1979? Uh. Witness, could you repeat your question? I could not get it. We oui. Yes. Did that Pagoda Barai Chondek work as a security center where people were executed as you said as you said in your statement and if yes for how long was it used as a security center between 1975 and 1979 and sir, the Pagoda was turned into a security center
and it was also used as a workshop at that time. Prisoners who were arrested and detained in that security center, some were killed, some were released. And as for the peoples, people who were transferred from somewhere else into that security office, they were killed. Tell us whether you know or whether you do not know whether people working on the 3rd January Dam work site were executed in that pagoda, in that security center. Answer. I have no knowledge of regarding uh, the workers at uh, the dam site. I uh, have no idea where they were taken and killed. Que vous savez si parmi les gens Do you know whether among those executed at the Barai Chandet Pagoda were Cham from Kampong Cham? Answer. I did not know. I noticed that uh, people uh, were transported in large uh, groups. I did not know whether they were Cham or Chinese. Vous avez dit quelque chose que je voudrais... You said something I would also like you to clarify. That is on page three of your statement in French, two in English, and three in Khmer. This is what you stated. Some guards of the bridge, for instance, the charm, were reported as missing, but I do not know why. Please tell us, were there any charm working as guards on the First January Dam work site, or the charm were there as workers. Answer. Charm, uh, who was the there was a one charm uh, person, female uh, ruined. Uh, she disappeared. Very well. Were those women workers or they were among the militia men and the guards or they were militia men and guards? This female, female was put in the, a mobile unit. Est-ce que vous savez pourquoi elle a disparu? And do you know why she disappeared? Do you also remember that person's name? Uh, Answer, I did not know the reason why she disappeared. She was called uh, and taken away. And after that time, she disappeared. Her name was Yan. She was jammed. Est-ce que sur le site du chantier, did women working on the work site have the right to practice their religion or to speak their languages? Answer: No, she sp spoke only Khmer language. Est-ce que les Cham could the Cham, particularly the women, continue to wear their traditional attire? And in the case of women, could they continue to wear their scarves? Answer: No. She wore 
make my clothing. Autre sujet dans votre région, votre village. Another subject in your village, true, in Bareng commune, Bareng district. Were there any changes around 1977, 1978 at the level of the cadres? Were cadres purged and replaced by other cadres? Answer, no. I would like to read to you what Cape Pig Banak, Kepok's son, zone chief, told investigators. It is document E3 slash 35, page 7 in French, 8 in English, and 7 in Khmer. That person died some time ago. This is what he stated, and I quote, when people from the southwest zone came, there were purges from the district down to the village. Following the arrival of people from the southwest zone, Tapoch was the chief of Barai district. End of quotes. Free translation. So you are confirming that you didn't see people from the southwest zone come to your region to occupy positions as cadres. Answer, I have no knowledge of. I do not know. Est-ce que vous avez entendu parler de ce? Did you hear of that person? Da Poch, P O U C H, the chief of Barai district. Answer, I heard of the name, but I uh, did not know this person. Sur le chantier, est-ce que vous... Can you tell us whether you yourself had a right to practice your religion on the work site? Answer. No, I never practice my religion. Est-ce que c'était interdit? Was it forbidden? Okay. Answer. It was uh, forbidden to practice any religions. And uh, we even could not hold any uh, Rituals. Est-ce qu'on vous a dit lors de réunion? Were you told during meetings whether there would be consequences in the case of any people who practice their religions? What did you risk if you practiced your religion? We were not allowed to practice any religion, so we had to comply with the instruction. Est-ce que durant toute la période où vous étiez during the entire period you spent on the 1st January dam worksite, were you therefore completely subject to the instructions that were handed down to you by your leaders? Answer. I had to adhere and respect uh, my leader, and if not, I would be refashioned or I would be warned and disciplined. Vous parlez d'être reforgé ou d'être. You're talking of being refashioned 
and being subjected to disciplinary measures. What kinds of disciplinary measures were imposed on you if you did not abide by the orders of your leaders? Okay. Answer. I would receive uh, verbal uh, reprimand and uh, I uh, was instructed to make a commitment that I had to come to work on time and did not go anywhere else. You said you stayed on the site for four or five months, which is not a very long time. Did you know the person called T R Y was also from Top Village and was also punished? Just for answer, I knew this individual by the name Three. He was young at that time. He was about 14 or 15 years old. His name was Three. I knew this guy. I do not know whether we are talking of the same person, Three. Was that someone who worked on the 1st January Dam work site? And if we are talking about the same person, do you know what happened to him? Answer. I did not know exactly uh, who, who was three, and I did not know what happened to him. Mais est-ce qu'il travaillait sur le site de construction? But was he working on the first January dam construction work site? Yeah. Answer: Yes. He carried soy at the work site. Tout à l'heure, vous nous avez dit que en moyenne, les gens. A while ago, you stated that people were aged on average 20, and now you're talking of people aged 14 or 15. Were there other people as young as three working on that work site? Answer. Not many of them. There was only one uh, person. Uh, he was three living in Troth village. He was young at the time. Est-ce que vous avez revu cette personne après? Did you see that person again after 1979? Did that person survive the regime? No, he disappeared ever since. Est-ce que vous avez entendu quoi que ce soit à propos? Did you hear anything regarding the reasons why Tree disappeared and where he may have been led to? where he may have disappeared. Done. Answer. I have heard of that a tree was taken and killed. He uh, was uh, put to guard uh, the bridge. Is it correct to Is it correct to say that? when workers had to go and relieve themselves, they would leave the work site and go into the neighboring woods. Yeah. Yes, that is true. The job work. During uh, the time that we were working at the work site, uh, we relieved ourselves in the forest because 
there were no latrines. Est-ce que les gardes du chantier vous surveillaient ou vous disaient And were you watched by the guards who told you to hurry up while you were in the woods, relieving yourselves? Answer, no. No. The guard would stay at their own places. Est-ce que dans les forêts avoisinantes, in the neighboring woods, did you notice that people from the worksite were detained in small cages made with uh, tree branches? I have uh, never seen it. I uh, did not go deep into the forest. Est-ce que des gens en auraient parlé dans votre unité? Did people talk about that in your unit? Did they refer to the existence of uh, cages in which people could be detained for re-education purposes. Answer. I did not know. No one told me about cages. I did not know. Bien. Dernier sujet. Very well. The last subject a while ago. You refer to the fact that when senior leaders came to visit the work site, you had to work harder and people made you run to do the work that you had to do. Did you see any foreign, uh, foreigners come to visit the work site? When I talk of foreigners, I'm talking of um, Chinese women and Laos women who came to visit the work site? Um, I never saw it because I, my uh, workstation was far from the place where the senior people came to visit the work site. As I stated, I was working far from that place. Merci. Je n'ai plus de questions. Thank you. I have no further questions. I will now give the floor to the civil parties, Mr. President. So, some change, look, Mr. President, you may not proceed. Lead call lawyer for civil parties. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Et bon. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, witness. My name is Marie Giro. I am lawyer for the civil parties. I have some questions to put to you today. You very briefly stated earlier in the morning that you were married during the democratic Kampuchea regime. In what year, if you do recall, and in which month were you married? Uh, Sir, I got married in 1967. I did not recall the exact date. I could only recall that I got married in 1967. 1977, said the witness. Thank you. Who organized the marriage? Uh, 
I'm sorry, it was Anka arranged for my marriage. There were 25 couples in that marriage. The marriage ceremonies uh, were held in another village, Dong village. It was far from our own villages. Chief, uh, the chief of the unit, bond arranged the marriage for all of us. Je vous remercie. Vos par Thank you. During that period, did your parents agree with the decision of the unit leader that you would be married? Answer. The chief of the unit did not consult uh, with uh, parents, uh, but uh, both sides of parents uh, had the discussion already before we got married. Connaissiez-vous votre? Did you know your spouse before you got married? Answer. I know him because uh, we live in the same village, Cross Village. Comment avez-vous appris? How were you informed that you had to get married? Do you remember when you were informed by your unit leader that you would be married, that you had to be married to the man from your village? For example, if uh, tomorrow I had to get married, I would be told uh, one day before that. Si je comprends bien votre if I understand your testimony properly, you have said that you were informed one day before you were married. Is that correct? The day before you were married. Is that correct? Answer, yes, that is correct. And uh, our parents uh, knew in advance that uh, we were going to get married. And were you told why Ankar was marrying you? Answer. Anka did not uh, give any explanation uh, to all of us, uh, but uh, perhaps there was a meeting uh, to inform us at that time. I cannot recall it. And what were your spirits? then when you learned the day before your marriage that you were going to get married. Can you tell us what you felt back then? Uh. Answer. I felt that I did not want to uh, get married, but uh, they came to call me uh, a few times, and I had to go. Did you feel free back then 
to refuse the marriage? Answer, I did not dare to refuse the marriage. And if uh, I dare to do so, I uh, would be accused of opposing them. I would be accused of uh, being, get, uh, being against the Anka. I had to accept that. And back then, did you ever meet women or even men who were asked to marry and who refused to get married? Yeah. Answer. No. People in my village did not take the courage to refuse the marriage. And you said earlier on that there were 25 couples that were married. So I wanted to put a few questions to you with regard to the marriage ceremony. So do you remember who presided over the marriage ceremony? Answer. I did not... Uh, Remember it, I did not know who presided over the marriage ceremony. As I told you already, the marriage ceremony uh, took place in Dong village. Uh, it was away from uh, my village. And when during the day did the ceremony take place? Do you remember? Answer. They came to call me at uh, 2 p.m. And when we arrived at the place, we were sitting in lines. And at 4 or 5 p.m., they uh, made a speech. And uh, the dinner would be served uh, after the ceremonies. And when you're speaking about they came to fetch me, who are these people? Who are these they who came to fetch you? I cannot recall the names. I mentioned the name of those who came to call me to attend the ceremony. Uh, they were from uh, some cat or uh, commune level. And did you make any wishes during the ceremony? And if that's the case, what were the wishes that you were asked to formulate during the marriage ceremony, if you remember? Each of us was asked to make a resolution or a commitment but I myself uh, did not uh, do it. Why? Why didn't you do it? Because I was not called uh, to, to do it. In fact, I'd like to clarify uh, the, the matter in only a representative of all the married couples was asked to 
make a resolution during the meeting and after that uh, dinner was served. And did the representative represent all of the couples and would speak on behalf of the couples because I want to be sure about your testimony. Yes, indeed, there is a case. The uh, representative uh, was one who represented the 25 newly married couples. And do you remember the wish that was uh, formulated by the representative of the 25 couples? Do you remember what he said during the ceremony and later on during the dinner? Can I recall the words that uh, were used at the time? And did your parents attend the wedding ceremony? No, they were not in attendance. They were not called to attend uh, the the ceremony only the individuals to be married record can you explain to us what the ceremony you attended during which you were married or how it was different or how it was similar to wedding ceremonies uh, that were organized uh, before the democratic Cambodia regime what were the similarities and what were the s differences? No, it was nothing similar to the uh, current uh, practice of holding a wedding a ceremony. Can you provide a bit more detail so that we may understand how this had nothing in common with the uh, current ceremonies? For example, were there monks? Was it possible to make offerings? Was there any music? Could you provide us with details with regard to the differences between the ceremonies back then and the ceremonies in the, in the ceremony during which you were married? What were the differences between the traditional ceremonies and the ceremonies under the democratic Kampuchea regime? It was uh, not similar in nature at all. Currently, there would be a, a, a procession of offering. There would be a, a session where it was called haircut ceremony, and there would be sermons uh, given by the monks, etc. The list of activities uh, was at length compared to a very brief ceremony held during the regime. I'm not a, word, I'm not a woman of uh, many words, so that's all I can uh, describe to you. Thank you, witness, for all of this detail. I know that it's difficult uh, to relive all of this uh, which dates way back and you're not saying maybe that much, but we understand exactly what you're saying. So what happened once the ceremony was completed? You said that there had been a dinner. So what happened after the dinner? 
were the couples obliged to spend the night together, to be specific about this? After the meeting and after the dinner, we were requested to return to our respective uh, house. So if I understood you properly, you did not spend the first night with your husband. Is that what I must understand? Yes, uh, that is correct. I returned home. And after that first night, uh, did you get together with your husband at any point in time? We uh, were told to stay together for three days, and after that, we went our different ways to do our uh, work assignment. And after that, uh, we were allowed to meet each other every 10 days. Thank you. Did militiamen ever come to watch over your house when you met with your husband during the first nights of uh, your marriage? No, no one uh, came. I would like to read out to you a testimony, and this is what was stated during the hearing of uh, 26 May. The person that you said you knew, because she came from the same village as you, Mil Heu, and she also got married during the Democratic Kampuchea regime. She got married in 1977, and she indicated on 26 May, and I'm going to read out what she said. It is transcript E1-305, uh, and this is at around 9.45 in the morning. Free translation. After my marriage, militia main uh, came to watch over us, and she, they came to see uh, if we had celebrated a ritual after the marriage, if we were delighted in each other's company, if we had burnt incense, if they had caught us burning incense, we would have been brought away and taken away and executed. And then she states a bit further on at 9.47, 16 seconds, I was not the only one who was watched over by the militiamen. The militiamen would watch over all of the married couples. Uh, so uh, is this something uh, that uh, you were aware of back then? That is to say, were you aware of militiamen coming to watch over the married couples? No, I was not aware of that. But I believe uh, they did not. They did not come and do that. Did you stay with your husband? You said earlier on that you got married or that you are married and that you have two children. So the two children you have, are they? did you have these two children with the person you married in 1977? Yes, I bore the two children from the marriage with him in 1977. 
And were your children born during the democratic Kampuchea regime, that is to say before 1979, or were they born after 1979? One of them was born in 1981. But I'm not sure I understood properly. So you are still married now with that husband? Yes, I remained uh, married to him. I only have one husband. I hadn't understood properly. I wasn't sure that you were with the same husband or not. After the marriage ceremony, you said uh, that uh, you had been married with 25 couples. Did you ever have an opportunity to see these people again, to see the people who were married on the same day as you? No. I have not seen them since as they were from various villages uh, surrounding the village that I live. So you were the only couple from Throck Village that got married that day, is that correct? There were two couples, including uh, mine from Throck Village. And we actually went to uh, get married in Dong village at the time. I had understood that, in fact. Uh, I have one last question only. Did you know back then if it was possible for marriages to be celebrated between new people and base people, or was there a rule discriminating the new people and the base people. So were you aware back then of the existence of that rule or not? At that time only old people were allowed to get married. And in, f in fact, uh, I believe there was a, a measure in place where new people would be allowed to get married with new people, but it did not happen yet in 1977. And according to you, when did this measure come into effect? I did not know about that. And you explained to us uh, that during the ceremony when you got married, which was do you know if there were other marriage ceremonies that were organized after yours or before yours around 1977 and during which villagers from Trop also got married?
No. Donc, à votre... So as far as you know, this ceremony, which included 25 couples, is the only one that took place during the democratic Kampuchea regime? Is that what I must understand from your testimony? I'm speaking about, of course, your commune. Yes, uh, that was the only occasion of the uh, marriage ceremony, and I did not see any other uh, ceremonies during the regime. Thank you, Madam Witness, for having answered my questions. Thank you, Mr. President. I am done. President uh, Judge Lavange, you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I have two brief questions for the witness uh, for her to clarify certain points in her testimony this morning. Maybe I didn't hear or understand well what you said, but can you tell us that if when you were on the 1 January dam site, if you saw people who had been arrested, qu y avait and uh, did people disappear at the work site? I never saw any workers arrested. However, there was a disappearance of a charm woman, and that was the only case I knew at the time of a disappearance at the work site. But I never saw any uh, workers being arrested. You also spoke about the what Barai Chandek Pagoda this morning, you said that you had seen many people being led to that pagoda. Do you know or do you have an idea of the number of people who were taken to what Barai Chandek, correct interpreter? cannot get you a, a figure, but people were being taken to that location uh, by vehicles and also by uh, ox carts, and it happened usually in the early evening. Did this happen on a regular basis? Did this happen every day? Or did this happen from time to time? Can you tell us? It happened uh, from time to time. And it did not happen uh, on a daily basis. After the end of the DK regime, did you go back to the Wat Barai Changdek Pagoda? I uh, returned uh, to live in my uh, house near that uh, pagoda after the regime fell, and my house was not far from the uh, fence of the pagoda. And do you know if uh, bodies were found, buried bodies, 
around the pagoda? And if yes, do you have an idea of how many bodies were found around the pagoda? After the uh, regime failed, I saw four or five pits, but I uh, cannot tell you uh, the number of dead bodies in those pits, and the, pit, the pits were pretty large in size. Uh, in fact, the pits were exhumed, and skeleton remains, including skulls, were collected uh, as evidence of the crimes committed during the regime. And were these skulls or bones placed in the stupa? What happened to them? The skeleton remains are preserved in a stupa, and it is in uh, the compound of the pagoda and a ritual ceremony has been held since every year. Did people in your family disappear or were executed during the decay period? No. During the period of democratic Cambodia, none of my family members uh, was killed. And among the villagers, or rather among the base people in the village, did anyone disappear during the decay period? There were some. However, uh, most of them were not uh, best people, they were from the other areas. So, most of the people who disappeared during the Democratic Kampuchea period and who were living in your village were people from elsewhere and also new people. Is that what I must understand? Yes, uh, that is correct. Most of them were new people. Thank you very much, witness. I have no further questions for you. President, uh, thank you, Chancellor Vance. It is now convenient to have our lunch break. We take uh, a break now and resume at 1.30 to continue our proceedings. Court officer, please assist the uh, witness during the lunch time and invite her to return to the uh, courtroom again at 1.30 this afternoon. Security personnel, you are instructed to take his phone to the uh, waiting room downstairs and have him return to attend the uh, proceedings this afternoon before 1.30. The court is now in recess. <laughs>